I call these people the elitists, and you'll see why when we're, when we're done talking about them. Who are the elitists? Henry Tapan, I believe you've heard this name before. William Watts Falwell, and Henry Fries. I'm sure there are others. These are the three we're going to talk about. Henry Tapan was the president of the University of Michigan in the 1850s. He wrote, wrote and spoke concerning what he called the low level of American education. He talked about German superiority. I don't, I don't think this would endear him to his students or his faculty, but nevertheless, he did it. He recognized differences between what he called collegiate learning and university learning. And he was contemptuous of what he called popular education. This is the kind of education that was available in most colleges and universities and also available in most normal schools of the time. He called for the transfer, and this is getting at the idea now, called for the transfer of lower level college work to the high school. And extension of the high school years by two. So don't come to us not knowing this freshman and sophomore small stuff. You ought to pick that up in high school. Then come to us and we'll really do some university learning. Probably an arrogant kind of guy. <laughs> William Watts Falwell. Uh, notice carefully, we're getting into people who have three names. Became president of the University of Minnesota in 1869. So he's, he's nearly 20 years after uh, our first gentleman. Became, in 69, urged, like Tapan, that the first two years of college be transferred to the high school. And went so far as to get that going in Minnesota. This leads to a situation called the Minnesota Plan, in which many high schools establish a collegiate department, which includes grades 11 through 14. Henry Fries was another University of Michigan president. Actually, he was not ever a president. He was an acting president three times. Three times they had searches going on for presidents, and in the, in the absence of a president on campus, Henry was asked to be acting president. Uh, he wasn't just an actor either. He, he did something significant uh, every time. He established upper and lower divisions, which is again getting into this freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. <coughs> Glitch. <laughs> he passes a revolution, admit, a resolution, it probably was a revolution too, admitting women. All that cheering was for the ladies, I guess. And, although not directly associated with the junior college idea, in 1870, he instigates something known as the diploma method of admission. Uh, that means rather than to having students take individual exams, <laughs> the college, University of Michigan, would have an okay list of state high schools. If you graduate from this high school, you will be admitted without taking an examination. This is, even though it's even though it's not the fully there yet, this is the forerunner of accreditation. You graduate from an accredited high school, you're in. These men, Tap and Falwell Freeze, have been characterized as elitists because they didn't embrace the junior college years 
as much as they rejected them. They saw the first two years of college as a distraction from the real purpose of an institution of higher learning. 